In the early summer of 1944, a new class of aircraft carrier entered service with the Royal Navy. This pair of ships was the Implacable class, consisting of HMS Implacable and HMS Indefatigable. They had been based upon the design of the preceding illustrious class of aircraft carriers, but had been improved for greater speed and a larger capacity to carry more aircraft. As these new carriers were descending their slipways in late 1942, at Harland and Wolf shipyards in Belfast, they were already preparing to lay the keel for the first of four new aircraft carriers that were intended to expand upon the designs of the brand new Implacable class carriers. These ships were the Audacious class and consisted of HMS Audacious, HMS Irresistible, HMS Africa and HMS Eagle. Their original design had called for double storied armoured hangars. However, aircraft currently in development were considerably larger than those that came before, and it soon became apparent that there wouldn't be enough height within the hangars to accommodate them. The designs were therefore subsequently enlarged to accommodate the next generation of aircraft. The keel of HMS Audacious, the first in the class, had been laid on the 24th of October 1942. And due to constant shifting of priorities within the yard, construction was slow. So slow, in fact, that by the end of World War II, none of the four ships had yet touched the water. And by now, the British government no longer required, or indeed could afford, the addition of all four new aircraft carriers for the fleet. And therefore, work on HMS Africa and HMS Eagle was suspended. Work continued, however, on the other two ships although it was decided to rename them. HMS Irresistible became HMS Ark Royal following the sinking of her earlier namesake in 1941. And HMS Audacious would also take the name of a lost predecessor, HMS Eagle, that had been sunk in 1942. On March 19, 1946, the newly renamed HMS Eagle was finally launched by Her Royal Highness Princess Elizabeth. But further delays would be added to her completion and that of Ark Royal, because the Royal Navy was undergoing a post-war review of their fleet requirements and the future role of aircraft carriers. After much debate, it was decided to continue HMS Eagle on her planned design, but HMS Ark Royal would be altered significantly. So much so that the two ships would effectively become lead ships in a class of their own. Work finally recommenced on Eagle and she was completed on the 31st of October 1951. She had a length of 803 feet 9 inches, a beam of 112 feet 9 inches and a draft of 36 feet at deep load. Her displacement was 43,750 tonnes as standard, but that would increase to 54,250 tonnes when at full load. Powered by Parsons Giad steam turbines, sending 152,000 shaft horsepower to her four propellers, she had a top speed of 31.5 knots. And when travelling at 18 knots, she would carry a standard complement of 2,500 crew to a range of 7,000 nautical miles. For protection, she had an armoured waterline belt 4 inches thick. Her hangars had 1 inch thick armour and the flight deck armour ranged between 1 inch to 4 inches thick. Her armament consisted of 16 4.5 inch medium calibre naval guns, along with 61 40mm Bofors anti-aircraft guns. She began her sea trials on the 31st of October 1951 and following her successful flying trials in February of 1952, she entered service on the 1st of March 1952, and soon received her first air wing. Two squadrons of Supermarine Attacker Fighters, which was an early first generation single seat jet fighter, two squadrons of Fairy Firefly anti submarine aircraft, and a single squadron of Blackburn Firebrand attack aircraft. The following few months would be spent working up her crew to full readiness, and in September of 1952, HMS Eagle sailed to northern waters to take part in the first large-scale NATO naval exercise of the newly formed Allied Command Atlantic. Exercise main brace consisted of naval forces of the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, France, Denmark, Norway, 
Portugal, the Netherlands and Belgium. Over 200 ships carrying 1,000 aircraft and over 80,000 men. It was described at the time as the largest and most powerful fleet that had cruised the North Sea since World War I. Its objective was to prove that Denmark and Norway could be successfully defended against invading Soviet forces. The Soviet Union were not happy and described main brace, along with other NATO exercises, as warlike acts, despite the fact that they themselves were preparing and embarking on their own similar exercises. The following year, HMS Eagle would be present at the fleet review at Spithead, in celebration of the newly coronated Queen Elizabeth II on the 15th of June 1953. And here is the aircraft carrier HMS Eagle, one of the largest and most powerful units of the fleet. This was the first such review of the fleet since the end of the Second World War, and the first opportunity to see the ongoing technical innovations that the war had enabled. Following a brief spell with the Mediterranean fleet, by mid-1954, Eagle was needing a refit, so she sailed for Devonport, where she would remain until February 1955. The rapid development of jet aircraft, as well as the changing conditions in which to operate them safely on deck, meant that her flight deck needed a drastic change. To allow for the higher landing speeds of jet aircraft, the concept of an angled flight deck had been explored since the closing months of the war. It would also allow for simultaneous launch and recovery of aircraft, with the ability of a landing aircraft to abort and relaunch in the event of missing the arrestor cables, without the risk of colliding with other parks or launching aircraft. Eagle's sister ship, HMS Ark Royal, had been modified during her construction to have an angled flight deck as standard, as opposed to retrofitting. But now it was the turn of Eagle to have her angled deck fitted. Because Eagle had quite a wide flight deck, a 5.5 degree angled deck could be fitted without much in the way of a major structural change. It did, however, need her arrestor gear to be repositioned, as well as the removal of nine of her Bofors anti-aircraft guns. Along with the angled flight deck, another British innovation was fitted at this time, in the form of a mirror landing aid, an optical landing system. Following her refit, she returned to service and spent much of her time in the Mediterranean fleet operating out of Malta. But in 1956, she would take part in her first active service. In July of 1956, Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser had nationalised the Suez Canal, taking away the control of the International Suez Canal Company, who owned and administered it. On the 29th of October 1956, Israeli forces began offensive operations against Egypt, and this was shortly followed with the assistance of French and British forces. The Royal Navy deployed the Centaur-class light fleet aircraft carrier HMS Bulwark alongside HMS Eagle. They would operate with support provided by Colossus-class light carriers HMS Ocean and HMS Theseus. At this time, HMS Eagle was operating an air wing consisting of Westland Wyvern and Douglas A-1 Sky Raider strike attack aircraft, the single-seat jet fighter Hawker Seahawk alongside de Havilland Sea Venom fighter bombers. She also carried Westland Whirlwind helicopters that were used for airborne assault as well as search and rescue. On the morning of November the 1st, 1956, HMS Eagle launched her de Havilland Sea Venoms and Hawker Seahawks to carry out a series of daytime strikes on Egyptian targets. Operating alongside chance vaud Corsairs from French carriers Aramanche and Lafayette, these attacks were a success and significantly damaged Egypt's air force. And by that evening, Egypt had lost 200 aircraft. The Suez Crisis may not have ended in success for the United Kingdom, but HMS Eagle, her aircraft and crew, had proven a formidable force when called upon. By the late 1950s, HMS Eagle was needing an overhaul to extend her operational life by another decade. And so in October of 1959, she returned to Devonport. The illustrious class aircraft carrier HMS Victorious had recently undergone the most complete reconstruction of any Royal Navy carrier, and the British Admiralty was preparing something similar for Eagle. However, the cost of such a rebuild, which was to include a stretched hull and new geared steam turbines, was too great, and so a more modest rebuild was carried out. She had a completely rebuilt island, and on top was fitted the most sophisticated naval radar of its time, 
the 3D S-Band Type 984 radar was able to track and rank up to 100 targets and was used for both ground controlled interception and as a secondary early warning radar. A new 2.5 inch thick armoured deck incorporating an 8.5 degree angled deck was fitted along with two new steam catapults and a resting gear and landing aids. Anti-aircraft defences had improved in recent years and throughout the fleet the Bofors 40mm anti-aircraft guns were being replaced with the SeaCat short range surface to air missile system. The SeaCat was the world's first operational shipboard point defence missile system. This rebuild of Eagle would see her Bofors removed and SeaCat put in their place, although she did retain her 4.5 inch aft gun turrets. To complement the overhauled aircraft carrier came an overhauled air wing. The Blackburn Buccaneer attack aircraft which had entered service in 1962, the de Havilland Sea Vixen air defence fighter which had entered service in 1959 and the Supermarine Scimitar strike aircraft in service since 1957, as well as the Fairy Gannett anti-submarine and airborne early warning aircraft. Whilst this was a formidable air wing, the rebuild did not include water-cooled jet blast deflectors, which were essential in launching the new McDonnell Douglas F4 Phantom, and so the full potential of Eagle's air wing was not to be realised on this occasion. On the 1st of December 1964, HMS Eagle was joined by Westland Wessex helicopters, and soon after, finally left Devonport after a five-year stay and set sail for the Far East arriving off Singapore in March 1965 to take part in the multinational exercise Fortex 65, alongside HMS Bulwark, HMS Victorious, HMAS Melbourne and HMNZS Otago. In September of 1965, Eagle was ordered to sail to Aden to assist with the deteriorating security situation there arriving on October the 1st, and not long after that, in the November of that year, she was stationed in the Mozambique Channel, as a response to Rhodesia's, modern day Zimbabwe's, unilateral declaration of independence from the United Kingdom, and she would be used as a deterrence against the Rhodesian Air Force. Later, Eagle would also be used as part of the Beira Patrol, which was a blockade of oil shipments to Rhodesia following United Nations trade sanctions. By early 1966, HMS Eagle was due a refit and so sailed for Devonport once more, where she had a DAX-2 arrestor wire fitted in anticipation of the McDonnell Douglas F4 Phantom, but still she did not have her jet blast deflectors upgraded to water cool versions, remaining with the older steel plate design. On June 16th 1969, Eagle set sail into the Atlantic bound for the eastern USA, where she would undergo trials for the F4 Phantom FG1. Due to the jet blast deflector problem, the standard deflectors were not used, and instead a thick steel plate was chained to the deck behind the aircraft to absorb the heat of the afterburners, and following launch the plate would then be cooled with fire hoses before the next aircraft could take up position. The trials were deemed a success, and a plan was put in place to order 48 F4 Phantom FG1s for the fleet air arm, and upgrade the jet blast deflectors to water cooled versions. In 1970, however, the new incoming British government concluded that the costs of the aircraft, the required ship upgrades for the Phantom fleet, and coupled with the estimated costs of operating a full F-4 Phantom air wing into the late 1970s, was simply too much. And by 1972, they had decided that Ark Royal was to be the main aircraft carrier operating F-4 Phantoms, and HMS Eagle was to be withdrawn from service. As the Royal Navy no longer needed to equip two carriers with F-4 Phantoms, 20 of the 48 aircraft ordered were supplied to the RAF to equip 43 Squadron at RAF Lucas in Scotland, who had recently been reformed to operate the Northern QRA Quick Reaction Alert. January 26, 1972, HMS Eagle was finally decommissioned. She was officially held in reserve until 1976, moored in the River Tamar although was constantly robbed of her spare parts to supply her sister Ark Royal until she was sold for scrap in 1978. Her final voyage took place on the 4th of September 1978 when she was towed to Cairn Ryan near Stranraer in Scotland for demolition 
A lasting tribute to HMS Eagle can be found in Yeovilton, Somerset, where one of her anchors, along with one of her sister HMS Ark Royals anchors, stands guard at the entrance to the Fleet Air Arm Museum. Thanks for watching. Please take a moment to hit the like button and consider subscribing.